Hello there, and welcome to the Assignment Journey podcast. The podcast that will take you from the, from when you first get an assignment to when you submit the assignment at the end. So the Assignment Journey is going to be an eight-part podcast. Each episode will feature me, Alexander Wood, and a number of special guests from the skills team and the University of Derby. Each episode will feature special guests talking about their area of expertise and giving you advice upon each area of the academic journey. So in this introductory episode, I am joined by the very special guest. <laughs> um, I'm Naomi. I work in the skills team with Alex, and I'm very pleased to be joining you. What does come naturally to Naomi is the fact that she is very good with skills, and especially very good with organisation and the assignment journey. So this podcast, as I've said, features eight parts. So in the first part, it's just an introduction where we outline where the podcast is going. But from there, we'll get right into the assignment from when you get it, so when you first get your assignment brief, to when you submit it. So part two will focus mainly on the using of the assignment brief. So you get it. So what? how can you use it to understand what you need to do? And how can you tailor your approach to the individual assignment? I think it's so important. I've been thinking a lot about understanding the question for some activities we're developing and it really is key if you're answering a different question to the one that your assignment has set then you're starting off at a disadvantage so understanding what that assignment is asking you to do is so important right at the beginning i know for a fact that in one of my assignments when i was a student at the university of derby i got marked down because i just completely misunderstood so the first stage of completing an assignment is to understand what actually you need to do and where Mm -hmm. to go next Definitely. So after you've understood that, that's when we get into part three. So we create and plan a structure around that understanding. And from there, we're going to go into how you can plan your reading around that structure. So first of all, thinking about what points you could raise. And secondly, thinking about, okay, where do I go next? What reading could I do? How could I use my reading around that structure? So then we go into part four. That's all about researching the assignment and evaluating sources of information and media. So we'll be joined by the academic librarians in that episode, and they'll be helping us understand some top advice for researching the assignment. The library at the university has a team of academic librarians who are specialists in this area, so it's really great to get them on board. And also do take a look at the online content, the resources they put available online as well, and we'll be talking about those throughout the podcast. But do check it out on the library website because there's lots there that those specialists have put together. So they are really good and really useful guidance. So then you get into part five, which is all about organizing the research that you've gotten. So now that you've done your research, now let's organize it. So what tools are available online and also what uh, settings are available on Word and other softwares to help you organize that research? What do other people do? We're going to be talking to some students and seeing how they organize their research. And finally, how do you put that research into a structure? So I know for me, I organise all mine into a structure and it will be here about other people. So after that, we're then going to go into, you've organised your research, you've done your research, you've got a structure, you know what the question's all about. Now you need to write it. The part which, as a student, I was the most afraid of. So in this episode, we're going to talk about paragraph structure, how you can create flow, and also critical analysis. Those are three really big things that we get asked a lot mm. Um from students and um, how to structure paragraphs creating that flow and then critical analysis that's going to be a that's going to be a big one i think part six is going to have lots of key stuff in it it's going to be a great one so after you've watched that part the next part so once you've finished writing your assignment then we're going to talk about what you do to reference it and how you can proofread it so some people reference their assignment all the way whilst they go other people reference afterwards Either way, we're going to be talking about some amazing tools that the university has available for referencing. And also, we're going to be talking about ways that you can proofread. Yeah, that's another one we get lots of questions on, um, proofreading. And actually, learning that skill of proofreading yourself, your own work, is so helpful. It's really great to ask other people for help as well, but there are things that you can do to help you proofread your own work, and that's really, really key to talk about. One of the key things that's going to be highlighted in that part is that proofreading is more than just checking your spelling, punctuation, and grammar. Actually, it's what you can do to help yourself get to check 
that you have actually hit that March scheme and you have got what you wanted to get. So that comes right back to part two, doesn't it? Um, understanding the assignment. Yes. Mm. So really, we, need to, we make a check. It's so thought through, Alex. Yeah. It's so thought through. We make a checklist from what we understand it and, you, and from the assignment brief of what you need to do. And you can check back when you're proofreading to see if you've achieved that. And if you haven't, that's where with good planning, you should have enough time to go back and change it and make sure that you have. And finally, after that, we're going to do a summary of all the, seven, all the past seven parts, get some of all the views together and make it into one conclusion episode where we can conclude everything we've done. And actually, after that, there may be, if you're lucky, and if the podcast is popular, a bonus episode. Oh my, that's not on the list we're reading off. This is news to me. So the bonus episode could include using your feedback. And after, you, after you've submitted and got your results back, how can you then use your feedback to get to the next stage? Oh, I'm excited about that. Let's just Everyone think. listen lots to the podcast so that we can go away and make that bonus. If one. you're very eager, though, there is already another podcast available about <laughs> using your feedback. But this will be specialist and definitely won't be saying the same things. I don't think I could say the same thing twice in a podcast. Okay, so this podcast is available in the sense that you can watch any episode, listen. or you could watch, you can listen to any episode, or you can watch all of them in a row. Or you could listen to all of them in a row. You could listen to all of them in a row, and you could cover the key areas that you feel are most important to do. So now let's listen to some key areas that some current students feel that they could improve upon. Sometimes I get feedback that my essays don't quite flow, so I tend to, when I'm proofreading, check that things are flowing and there's like linking sentences, and if not, I have a go at reordering it and making it flow better. Um, I need to improve on my sentence structure and rephrasing it into an academic writing rather than like spoken English. Time managing, because I usually start writing assignments at the last moment, which can be very stressful, therefore I should try and start earlier. I think for me I need to improve on the structure mm -hmm. of my writing, so to do this it will probably be improving like the planning stages, so if you plan more the structure will be more in place before you start writing, mm -hmm. so I tend to just go straight into the writing bit. So Naomi, what do you think about those then? Well, highlighting a lot of the things we're talking about, so that's good, that's reassuring. <laughs> and we have tried to make this podcast series um, relevant to you as students, and hopefully that, that backs it up. These are things that students want help with, particularly structure. And I think it's good that we'll be talking about structure all the way through, almost referring back to that structure, um, if that's something that's coming through as being what people want help with. I think what's interesting is there's a lot of talk about sentence structure, there's a lot of talk about structure in general, flowing and planning and time management, and all those things are covered. So for time management and the planning, they're going to come quite early. In part three, we're going to discuss how to create and plan, and also planning your future time with the assignment. And also time management links into that. And hopefully student voices will reflect about that throughout this podcast. So those students, they want to improve those things. So other than using the, this podcast, what resources are available to help these students work on these key areas that can help them get better grades? I mentioned earlier about the library guides. So we've got a whole range of library guides that were available on the library website. If you get to the library homepage, you can do that a number of ways. Go through you do, go to derby.ac.uk forward slash library, Google it or search engine of your choice, um, but get to the library homepage and click on finding subject information. And what will you will see there is a whole range of library guides on lots of topics. We've got a section called skills guides that talks about a lot of these things. There's guides on academic writing, for example, critical thinking, evaluating sources of information, lots of things there. There are also lots of other guides as well on different areas of using the library. I spoke earlier about the academic librarians and guides they've put together. So do go and take a look because there's lots of stuff there. There will be a direct link to skills guides in the description of this audio podcast or the description of the YouTube video that may come out. That may come out. Oh my. Oh, like a YouTube multi video with talking and yeah. little nice images. You didn't We're mention multi platform. That, did you? Yes. Open broadcast for everyone. Excellent. So, as I said earlier, these podcasts are available for you to watch in the order that you want to watch them. You could focus, you could watch all of them if you'd like, or you could watch the specific ones that you feel would help you enhance your skills and abilities. Or listen. Yes. 
<laughs> Sorry, I've thrown you now, Alex. I do apologize. I need to have like a light that says when I'm allowed to talk and when I'm not. <laughs> In the next episode of this podcast, Naomi and I will be discussing how you can use the assignment brief to understand the question and what is required from you, and also how you can then tailor your approach to the individual assignment and why you might want to. For now, thank you very much. Thank you, Naomi, for being my special guest. You are very welcome. I'm glad you're still intending on having me back for the next episode. (laughs) I'm very pleased to be here. I'm looking forward to the next one. Should I point out that I couldn't get anyone else yet or not? (laughs) (laughs) I'd also like to point out that I'm actually Alex's boss, so he needs to be careful what he says on the podcast. I'm a delight. You are. (laughs) Thank you very much for coming, Naomi. You're very welcome. And thank you, listeners. See you in the next part.